Okay, so these are the seven things the disabled are forced to lose. And the reason I'm doing this video is not to be like a pitter-patter, you know, downer kind of individual. I want to actually shine a light on this because I know there are quite a few people who work for legislators and also legislators who essentially watch this channel. And with that said, I want to go through essentially those things that are major categories of the Social Security Disability Insurance recipients and Supplemental Security Income, uh, you know, Supplemental Security Income um, uh, which we call it recipients SSI, uh, will go ahead and not be able to access in a true and traditional way like other individuals. You know, the working class that can go ahead and access these things versus those who can't work. So the, the thing I want to get at with this video is going into what are the things that the disabled are really forced into. And obviously it doesn't apply to every single disabled person. Not every single one is forced into it, but in majority, we're talking 80%, 90% in majority, they'd be forced to actually lose these particular things. So number one, is retirement for SSDI people at 67. That is one of those things where they're forced to retire at 67 instead of being able to go ahead and hold out to 70. Now, the game is with SSDI benefits, you want to get onto them, ride them to full retirement age, which is, of course, around 67 now for most people. And as a result of that, the whole point is they don't have the choice at that point to go ahead and wait until they're 70 to take. Because at that point, they can opt out of taking their retirement and wait until 70, but they won't have any disability benefits and they won't have any money saved up usually because they're a poor disabled individual. Whatever extra money they've had, they've likely spent up to this point. So they're just living on their SSDI benefits. So they lose out on the opportunity of having any way to basically wait to reach full retirement or sorry, the maximum retirement age of 70. So when people on SSDI reach 67, they almost always have to go directly onto retirement and can't actually attempt to grab their full maximum, sorry, their maximum retirement age, which is 70. Number two, or SSI individuals basically waiting to go onto retirement after 62 years old. So a lot of you guys don't realize, but then you know SSI automatically transitions to retirement at 62 years old. You don't get to wait to 67. You don't get any of those benefits and that stuff. You automatically have to go into retirement at 62. Why? Because the government doesn't want to have to continue to pay for you on SSI benefits during that time. Because SSI, supplemental security income, comes from specifically the general taxes, whereas retirement comes from essentially what you've paid in throughout your life. Now, here's the deal. A lot of people are on SSI, haven't paid it enough into retirement, and so they have to do a concurrent thing where they have SSI plus retirement. They get with, hit with all the negatives of SSI to bolster the retirement amount. That gets them up to around 1000 bucks. But you will never, or I can't say never, but you will almost always never see an SSI person with the capacity to go ahead and reach 67, full retirement age, which means that every single year that they had to take retirement benefits early, they did not benefit from that 8% bump per year of an increase that they could have gotten if they waited to 67 or potentially 70. Number three, less each year. So across the board, retirement people, you know, people on retirement, SSI benefits, SSDI benefits, they're all getting less, including survivors, including you know, auxiliary benefits, including disabled little child benefits. All of them are getting less because the cost of living adjustment is not a proper way of actually assessing the increases that are seen in the American, American economy. Now, normally the cost of living adjustment isn't a big deal. We don't have a lot of inflation. It's not really, 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 really big, but they've changed the way that they calculate the cost of living adjustment many, 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 many times over the decades. And in doing so, whenever we have significant inflation, they don't calculate it to your advantage. They calculate it to your disadvantage. So you want to get a little bit of money increase when there's a massive increase in the cost of actually buying things. For example, food. We are experiencing some of the worst food prices, you know, local stores, Publix, Walmart, et cetera, uh, we've ever seen in the history of food. And these increases are not properly represented in what you actually get going into the next year to help you afford that food that you were able to purchase previously. So one of the problems is that all these disabled individuals, all these retired individuals, all these people on social security benefits are forced to lose something each year to be able to have and afford what they had the prior year. They just can't afford it going forward. So that's what they're losing. Number four, a future with big money opportunities. The only way of getting big money is selling things you had at that point, which you already likely sold while you were waiting to go ahead and be found disabled. So here's one of the big things that happens. Individuals that are on disability benefits, there's only so, okay, so when you're, you know, you're born, you're working, right? And then you become disabled. In between the working and become disabled, there's potential of having essentially 
a let's just call it like it is a big money whatever right you might have a, an insurance thing happen you might have a legal suit happen you might have a this happen or that happen or this, but whatever but there's a big money moment you might sell your house you might do this you might you know sell your car you, something you own that's a fairly heirloom and you're not using it you don't think your children are going to want it or even keep it and you sell it there's a big money thing right that having big money going forward, it's just not going to exist when you're, you know, disabled like that, knowing that, knowing that like, okay, this is it. This is the last, this is it. This is the last hurrah. That is something that the disabled lose because they're just not likely to get a big money option going to the future. Okay. It's just not like, I mean, maybe they'll have a car accident and a personal injury and then they'll get the funds that way. But usually they're not looking at big money options because they're not working. They're not buying things. They're not increasing their portfolio, blah, blah, blah. So they lose that opportunity. And that's a very big thing. Uh, let me see. I see a question here. Beach life. Uh, can you tell me, Walter, what to expect at my final stage of my workman's comp case of a hearing at, uh, at a lawyer's office via screen? It's been four years now, still doing treatments, just wanted. So here's the thing. I always stay away from giving commentary about workman's comp. I can go through that, but uh, I try to keep this channel mostly about like, you know, disability learning, but I guess I could always ask a, a workman's comp attorney to basically come onto this channel. I've been thinking about asking this one LTD attorney who does long-term disability, which is like the private insurance side as opposed to the federal government side, which is what I do, uh, to come on and just kind of answer some basic questions. But Beach Life, send me a bunch of questions uh, about workman's comp, and I'll see if I can get another workman's comp attorney just to answer it, uh, because I don't do that stuff on the daily. I mean, I've been in those hearings. I've seen those things, but I, I want you to have the most up-to-date and obviously go from there. All right. Now, with that said, let's go to the next one real quick. Okay, so the disabled, they're forced to be basically stuck in debt if they start playing the credit card game. Let me go through this real quick. So the ability to get out of debt after they've you know spent their back pay, they're basically stuck in it, stuck in it, stuck in it year after year, month after month, because they usually just can't pay it down. And what happens is when they realize how little their disability benefits actually are, they're not able to keep up the standard of living that they had, and they have to start selling this and start selling that, and their life really starts to kind of unwind, right? The things that they've spent so much time, you know, getting this, putting up a wall, you know, getting this, putting up another wall as security, getting that, putting up another wall to secure all the things that they got. Each wall is just taken down and taken down and taken down until they really just don't have the things that they used to. And then they start hitting the credit card and then the credit card starts to build and then they can't get out of the rotation of being able to pay off the credit card. So the ability to get out of credit card debt is another thing that the disabled usually lose the ability to do once they're found disabled. Next thing, uh, a future with a significant other. Now, I'm going to tell you something about uh, disability benefits. And I, I hear this more from men than I do from women. Um, you know, we always see on YouTube, basically, men will say, you know, we, we have to earn and achieve everything to obtain, you know, like, you know, the respect from people. And women, it's less than that. It's, you know, a woman exists and we appreciate her just for being a woman as she exists, right? And then some women would say, of course, that's not how it is. I have to achieve this or do this or whatever. The point is, I'm not getting into that whole thing. The point is, I will say this. I hear more from the disabled men how it is nearly impossible for them to be able to go on a date, afford a date, you know, find somebody to get into a relationship with. Um, and usually when it occurs, both parties are in a state of poverty, right? It's two people in poverty and they're getting together to form a team, you know, to basically continue forward with their life. Now, I will say this. Um, people that are on SSI, the program is quasi designed to go ahead and keep people from basically dating, getting married, all those things. A lot of individuals still have kids, but the bottom line is it's definitely not designed to get people in a mood to go ahead and do traditional dating. So the bottom line, just to understand, is that a lot of these disabled individuals, you know, when it comes to having a future with a significant other, it's cut short. It's just not going to happen. It's just not going to be present, you know, in the way that it is for other individuals. <laughs> WTF, am I watching? Thank you. Thank you for the $10 donation. I super appreciate it. That's awesome. Um, uh, very, very cool. Uh, let's see what, uh, I'm on something. Uh, so SSI, when I get my car accident settlement, how will it affect my SSI? Thank you, Walter. You are awesome. It'll affect your $2,000 resource limit. Uh, specifically you'll have to do spend down provisions. Uh, make sure you spend it down on specific things that are allowable for you to have as an SSI recipient. So think about like, you know, basically like $1,500 in life insurance policy, having a car, any car could be a super luxury car, uh, maybe buying essentially a, a house on a piece of land uh, with an extra room that you rent, um, all those sorts of things. But anyways, um, it's one of those things you've got to learn about what SSI does not, you know, count against you uh, and you're allowed to have. So you could, you could literally, if you're on SSI, you could own the Taj Mahal. Of course, it would get, you know, not upkept very well because of the, all the cost of upkeeping it. But you could potentially and literally own the Taj Mahal if it were in the United States. 
And, you know, essentially um, that would be allowable because you're allowed that one home. Although, you know, remember they do calculate and look at like all the other things around. It's a whole, I mean, Taj Mahal wasn't a great example, but the point is you could have, you could buy a place, just make sure it has at least two rooms that UA, you can rent one out. Okay. All right. Next thing here, I remember you still get hit with for each month that you have a larger amount that, you know, every, every $2 over $85, they take away $1 from your SSI benefits. So, and just remember if you go over the 1550 for SG or for SGA with earnings that you make off of it, they're going to hit you for that. But if you have more than 2000, you got to do the spend down provision and you have to keep it accountable. Like you have to show what you spend it on. Next thing. Um, okay. Seven, the ability to have reserves in case something goes wrong. So the disabled give up the ability to basically have reserves of funds in case something goes wrong. So they're always living in this like hand to mouth anxiety situation. They're always in this moment where they're like, ah, you know, I'm worried something might happen. Something might be really bad. What do I do? Oh, I see old school truck driver. Very cool. Diana Fernandez. I see there. Where's love pugs. Is love pugs in there. There it is. There's love bugs. Love pugs. Very cool. Mary multiple. Very good. Very good. Cyber doc. 10 men. Um, very cool. So here's the deal. Um, when it comes to the ability to have reserves, um, disabled people are always living with some sort of anxiety and depression because they always don't have enough to go ahead and put away to be able to feel secure. So they're always living their life in this like waiting to die situation. And so that, that anxiety that like, what am I going to do if something happens? What am I going to do if something happens? What am I going to do if something happens? That's always in the back of their mind. So they lose the calmness, the relaxedness, the I'll be okayness that a lot of other individuals would traditionally have. Next one. Number eight, the ability to upkeep things from cars to AC units to dehumidifiers. So just to clarify, and this is super duper important, um, car parts, really expensive now. Uh, I don't know what happened. I don't know why it's happened over the past couple of years with COVID. I get the whole, you know, from China thing. I don't know why they're still priced ridiculously high, but they are. Next thing, AC units, uh, basically, you know, uh, most of the AC units that are made today, they're not set up to actually be refilled, which sucks because a lot of like the wall units, you just throw them out, put a new one in. And the whole pain is buying a new one. And of course the install, which usually can suck for a lot of these window units, especially if they're through the wall, which is what that thing is that you always hear right over there. That's my wall AC window unit. Yeah. Yeah. I bought a house in Florida. It's got one of those. Yeah, the house actually started as a trailer. <laughs> Didn't realize that until about three, four months ago, maybe six months ago. Uh, but I've been living here since 2019. So yeah, yeah, the house just, I have a house that grew over time. That's how I like to put it. It just started as a trailer and just kind of grew. The trailer got stuccoed out. Yeah, so anyway, so here we go. Next one. Okay, the ability to afford entrance fees to sporting events or really any event. Uh, some events will give you a discount if you're disabled, et cetera, but uh, you know, especially the veterans get us, you know, discount with all that stuff. But if you try to go to an event, the fees to enter the event are just ridic ridiculous. So it's one of those gigs where, you know, it's a situation that's super duper important for people to understand, like the disabled, they don't have the opportunity to go and relax like other people do. They're always living in this like level of anxiety and there's no way for them to go to events, hobbies, you know, sporting, whatever's to actually release that anxiety, to feel that like, ah, oh, this is cool. Wow, this is amazing. Ah, oh, I feel great. They don't they don't get to have that in the future. Next one, okay? Uh, number 10, the ability to go on vacation. So vacations are one of these things where, like you can have a super cheap vacation where you're just like, you know, you're going for two days, you go to one place, you stay overnight, you hang out there, and then at the very end of the night, you come back. A lot of disabled individuals just can't afford to go on vacations because they can't afford the board of the room now. Now, as you know, and I know you guys know a lot of this, hotels, motels have become way more expensive. And that's the result of basically the economy just being poorly run. And as a result of that, what happened is people just kept raising the prices, raising the prices, raising the prices because their costs went way up. You know, when you go to the grocery store, right, the, 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 the personal grocery store, right, for your person, right, that's, that's expensive. But you want to know what's really expensive? The business grocery store. Paper pens, printers, computers, all that junk is super expensive now. It's, it's way worse than it used to be. I used to be able to buy paper uh, like six years ago for like 27 bucks for the 10 ream, uh, which is like the big box with the 10 reams of like the, you know, you, you know, the regular paper, the chunk of paper that you pull out for each. And then basically now I can only get that for around $50. So, and, and really the big price increase happened in 20, uh, 21, 2022, 2023. So, you know, for me, just a lot of businesses I know are going out of business, which is ironically, the small businesses are the ones that are most going out of business, which is not what I expected to happen considering who's on the hill. So that really surprised me. A lot of things really surprised me. All right. Anyways, next one. Um, 11, the ability to go on cruises, RV rallies, 
or hobby multi-day events. Now, remember the, the, the veterans, right? The veterans who are disabled and also on disability benefits, they're still doing a lot of this stuff. But because they have an extra check and the check's even bigger than their civilian check. But those who are just on regular SSI or something else, security, disability, insurance, your traditional disability, they're not going on cruises or RV rallies or hobby uh, multi-day events because they just can't afford it. Okay, so the RV rallies, they can't afford an RV. The cruises, let's just be honest here. Like if they go on a cruise, they're going to have to spend money. Cruises are always expensive no matter what you do. They're just not going to be able to afford it. The hobby multi-day events, like you could go, you could do it, but you'd have to keep it super duper duper cheap. And let's hope the car doesn't break on the way back. You know, you might get some individuals who are going to like, you know, cool events for the medical condition or cool events for like, you know, uh, Comic-Con or whatever, things like that. You'll see some of that stuff, but other stuff where it's like pay to play, where it's very expensive at the events, every drink is very expensive, et cetera. Like they're not going to the yacht boat show. They're just not, it's not, it can't happen. So these are things that I wanted to point out. I know that individuals who, uh, you know, as the most viewed and subscribed to Display Attorney, I know that individuals that actually make law, change law, et cetera, uh, who are part of that process do, you know, sometimes watch these videos. These are things that the disabled lose the opportunity to do. If we can find a way to fix that so that they have a better opportunity of not losing these options, not losing the way that they can go ahead and do these things, that's the best thing we can do. All right, I will catch you guys at the next video. Please, please, please remember to go ahead and like this video. We only have about 35 likes. Click that like button. Don't let the like button not, you know, we want to give it love. We want to take care of the like button. Also, hit the subscribe, click the all. Uh, and then with that said, please thank all the members in the chat. They're doing a great job. Um, and then for those who donated, I super appreciate it. That's awesome. Uh, if you guys want to leave a review, go to Disability Resolution or Disability Resolution Florida or Law Firm on Google. Leave a review there if you like these videos. Uh, I will catch you guys uh, essentially tomorrow. I'm going to be going ahead and just kind of chilling out. It's 24 a.m. And as you guys know, I'm constantly working. Uh, but I will catch you guys a little bit later. Um, I see da, 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 Jeffrey Wilson said, can you explain to people the difference between SSI and SSDI in terms of saving up money? Um, yeah, I mean, I can do a video on that. Do you want me to do I'll do a video on that. That's fine. Um, let me just hold on. I'm going to send an email to myself. Uh, let me pull up the email program. That's fine. All right. I will do that. Good, sir. Actually, I'm just going to literally copy what you put here. <laughs> just copy Jeffrey Wilson messer. There we go. Hold on. Let me just, let me just do that. Ah, I hit the wrong button. And now it's coming up with this like pin thing. I don't know. It's okay. No worries. I'll figure it out. Anyways, guys, I will catch you a little bit later. You have a wonderful, wonderful night. And thank you so much for having a, an amazing time in this chat and keeping the live alive. I'll catch you a little bit later and we'll go from there. Thanks. Thank you so much. Attorney Walter, not disability resolution PA. Thank you so much. Bye-bye everybody. Bye-bye.